What if a doctor said, hey, bend over, let me look at that monkey, but you were there for like something, you know, normal and trivial, like um, just like you had a cold or something, and you were like, I, I'm just here for some cough medicine, and he was like, let me check your lungs, lungs sound good, let me check your heart, heart sounds good, let me check your mm-hmm. ears, ears look good, let me check your throat, throat looks good, why don't you bend over and let me look at that monkey? I would trust his advice, and I would go. I would show him my monkey, and I'd spread my cheeks really wide, and I'd shake it. I'd oh. shake it to where the hole was shaking too, because the cheeks would be spread, and I'd be gripping them so they couldn't shake, but my hole would still be shaking back and forth, mm. and up and down, and circularly, in a circular way. And I would keep shaking my hole. If he wanted me to, and if he said, Thomas, stop shaking your monkey and keep it still, that's what I'd do. Because he's a first responder. Mm, okay. Yeah, fair enough. Why are, why are paramedics first res- They never send a real doctor out there. Um, I want my first responders to have white robes. And I yeah. want them to, when they come and they look at my crumpled body on the ground, I want them to get a little <laughs> stethoscope. Go, he's He's hurt. <laughs> He's hurt. I think this guy needs to go to the hospital. I really think this guy, you're fucking like your skull and pieces of your bone, like shotgun still smoking. He's like, this man needs medical attention. I came here in a Ford Focus. We need an ambulance out here. <laughs> Come get the second responders. I hate the second guy, the, the second monkey inspector. Yeah, the first responder should just be a regular guy. Dude, my With uncle. No training, he's, okay, this guy's fucked up. Get a second responder out here, and then they send the paramedics. Be way cheaper. Uh,. My uncle was uh, like a, what's the term? Like the par- like it's the old school paramedic term where it's like the, like your job is to like go and like scoop people up off the freeway. He was a paramedic, but like. Is it different from an EMT or is it? Well, he was like, the, it, within the EMT community, there are people that get sent and they have more training to like, oh, like I can save you. And then there are people who are like in the ambulance, but they like, um. They're like they, he like worked the highways and it was like for like motorcycle crashes and stuff. I I don't know. I'm not a paramedic. It's like a industry term. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you're all the same in the sense that you all ride in the ambulance and you get your ambulance, but you're not trained all the same and you're not paid all the same. So my uncle was one of his like first jobs. The racist big racist guy. Yeah. One of his first jobs was like he worked in an ambulance and he was an EMT or whatever. But he just like didn't have you know he this was like in the 80s where it's like do you know how to read all right here's a scrub and a stethoscope get in the back of this meat truck you're gonna get paid like six bucks an hour and then you're just gonna like you know help people or whatever and he said he was on a job for like six months and uh he got a call about a guy who was like weaving in and out of traffic on a uh, one of those old like yamaha like sport bikes or whatever and uh he zigged when he should have zagged at like 80 miles an hour and then just hit the back of an 18 wheeler and they had to shut like all of 45 down. And I was like, well, what was, he was like, ah, this is his head, a twinkle in his eye, real real fucking piece of work, whatever. Talked about him enough on the show, but he's like, yeah, we had to, we had to pressure wash him off. Yeah. He just kind of had to hose him out of there a little bit. This is is one hell of a work day. And of course I'm like 12. (laughs) So I'm like, you had to, you had to hose hose him off. Yeah, I mean you know so part of him went through the back. It kind of had to clear all the boxes out and stuff. The so boxes kind of stopped part of him, but like his legs and stuff were just kind of like they had like cooked onto the onto the like part of the trailer hitch and you know the where the bumpers are. This is one hell of a night, and I was like, "How? Did you, God, did you keep working?" He's like, "Hell yeah, yeah. That's the coolest part. I, up till then, it had just been drunks." <laughs> It's, it's good money. It's easy money. You, you get paid $14 an hour. And, I mean, you ain't like any of the nurses or nothing. But you get to pick up people off the highway. I was like, you ever just like, I don't know. You, you have a member of your family you talk to. And, like, there are several moments where you realize, like, I'm not on this guy's level. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. definitely I have, like, some problems and some thoughts that aren't great. You know, and I've maybe I've done or said things I'm not proud of. But... <laughs> I don't have, like, a gleam in my eye when I'm talking about pressure washing a guy off the back of a fucking Exxon truck. Yeah. I probably would have been really lazy about it. Like, I sort of start... I have the hose on, like, shower mode. (laughs) 
yeah, I'm like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I almost got it. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we have another guy we have to go save. And I'm like, I'm saving this guy right now. <laughs> trying, I'm trying. I'm, tre- I'm yeah. te- testing out the different types of hoses. Yeah, <laughs> you're. I'm like, I'm like drawing stuff in the blood. You're like your ADD is like completely acting up. Yeah, you're just like you have the mister on, and you're like, you can see kind of a rainbow with it. <laughs> Yeah. Like Thomas, we need you to go over there and get his leg. We have to have. You're something. cleaning the sidewalk. He's not on the sidewalk. <laughs> he's in the truck. Like he's in the back of the 18. It's so clean. Wow. <laughs> I can kind of see, you know, bones are pretty white. You'd think they'd have like a different. His family is here. I'm like, I'm going to do the cool S. When he's doing school, you ever do that? It's a cool S on the ground now. <laughs> the police are up there. The fire department's like, <laughs> they're like, um, ma'am, my husband, no, daddy. Ma'am, we've got our best guys on the gig. Okay, so he's we're doing everything we can to get your husband out of the truck. Fire guy doesn't know he's dead yet, and you're just over there like, be listening at one little toesy, two little. I'm I'm on the phone. Yeah, we got this fucking this dead guy here. He's like pretty dead, but like I said, like I'm gonna get your money back, <laughs> but you gotta let me get paid. You know, I think I might get a blood bonus for cleaning all this blood. This guy had a lot of blood in him. That's how you know. I bet he probably had high blood pressure, probably, probably while he was doing stuff like this. <laughs> but, yeah, it looks like he, I think this guy was part motorcycle. There's pieces of motorcycle in his blood. There's a, there's a CVT transmission in his sternum. I didn't mm. know they had robots out here. <laughs> oh, you know what's funny? There's a candy wrapper in his stomach. I can see it. It looks like he liked uh, he liked Starburst. He got a little overzealous. And then he burst. He, yeah. Guy burst. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the new guy, he's going to be on with you tonight. He uh he makes the drives interesting and he he makes the jobs go by quick, but he's just kind of weird. And you're just over there like pulling out a fucking Ziploc bag of ears. You're like, I've been collecting these, you know. Yeah, so I mean, it's pressure washing's hard, so I like to roll around the blood first and see how much of it I can pick up with my jacket and pants. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes I'll do pranks where mm-hmm. I'll leave one perfect square of blood, <laughs> and then it dries. And I like people, to do pranks. I like to do EMT pranks where yeah. I'll get out. Sometimes I'll drive by the scene and circle the block a few times, and while the guy screams for help, and then I'll sometimes I'll act like I'm going to run over him, and I don't. But sometimes I like to call the families and tell them that he's miraculously survived. It's honestly like a work of God. Yeah. Just the gears of heaven were turning and turning, and the light was shining on your son's just life that day, and then they show up, and they maybe they're like, oh, my God. I, oh, he, When he got that motorcycle, I told him, but the good Lord must have had him in his sights that day, you know, and just – and kept him safe. Thank you so much for the call. And then my favorite part of the prank is I just I just dropped the black bag at their feet. And I go, hey, no, he's gone. He's, he's dead. Yeah, he's super dead. He's not even in like 10 pieces. It's mostly like a paste. Can you identify him? This is his large intestine. <laughs> <laughs> Did he like to eat spicy foods? Because there's an ulcer in here. <laughs> I, I think just, he needs to go to a doctor. I'm just kidding. He's I, dead. He can't go to one. I, I, there ain't no help in him. Not a regular one. No, he'd have to go to like a wizard or something. If you want, man, there, there's a community garden. We can throw him in the compost pile if you want. He's not worth much at this point. Um, uh, on the bright side, I've saved you've. I would probably cremate his remains because he's maybe bury him in a shoebox. Yeah, you know? it's tough. It's not a. Um, Sometimes I like to play. Uh, I'll, I'll play patient pranks where um, I throw him in the front seat. I throw him in the driver's seat, and I say, all right, you know where to go, hospital, right? And they go, I just had a seizure. I can't do this. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'll just well, can, I'll say, get out of the driver's seat, and I'll throw him out on the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. Leave. Or I'll offer somebody a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you're having a real bad heart attack. Here's a, here's a stogie. I know you just overdosed you on Fent, but, you know, hey, when I was uh, opiate head, I was a junkie, nothing hit. While I was nodding off like a nice camel. You know what I mean? So, uh, 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 yeah, I mean, I got Narcan in my pocket, but I feel like you're being mean to me right now because you're not accepting my cigarette. And, like, you know the rule at the bar. If somebody offers you a cigarette, that's your boy for the night. You know what I mean? So, since you're here and you're not, like, accepting my cigarette, I feel like you're disrespecting me. You know what I mean? What if it was Sharkan and it said and you used it for people who got bit by a shark? Isn't that funny? And it grew your <laughs> Isn't that funny? 
Hey, wake up. Isn't it, wouldn't it be funny if a shark came and said it was for people who got uh, bit by a shark? Uh, help, help, help me. Uh, help. How about uh, dark tan? It's just spray tan you just spray on people. Just like, <laughs> man, you were looking pale. Let's get some of that. I need to get some color back in you. You look horrible and you're very rude. <laughs> Anybody ever tell you that? Where am I? You're about to die. I could, you, I, you're in hell now. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I could help you, but you have disrespected me. Dude, I gave you a wedge and you didn't even feel it, dude. I think you're on drugs or something. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I took your uh, boxers off. I put women's underwear on you. Your family's going to be super ashamed of you. <laughs> It's yeah. not really going to... They're going to worry about you, but your dad's definitely going... I mean, he dude, is the pastor. Dude, so. you are literally wearing my mom's bra and panties right now. You are... Kind what of is wrong with you? Yeah, you're kind of like pervert, f- freaky. You know what I mean? I think my yeah, are you up. were jacking off on the subway, and we, I finished you off, and you didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I got your penis fully hard for the probably the first time in years. It's been yeah, it's been. You've had a tough life. I really, if I were you, I would want to meet literally any other medic but me. Uh, nice boils, not. <laughs> They look gross, and I'm going to squeeze them. That's the type of stuff would be mean to do, though. Yeah. I wouldn't do something like that. I'd probably save a, probably about 100 lives a day if I was an EMT. Mm-hmm. I remember I was at a Tyler, the Creator, Earl, it was an Odd Future concert in uh, downtown Houston. And this girl that I kind of knew through the grapevine, that makes it sound weird. It just was an old friend of a friend. Um, she uh, took too much Molly. And she like, uh, like over like overheated or whatever. That's the term. Like got too hot. Yeah. And um, I like took her to the back of the medic room or whatever. And there was another girl in there who was just straight up trying to like she was having a hard time too. I think she was clearly fucked up. Just trying to trying to fuck the paramedic that was helping her. <laughs> just like, and she was like, we were. I think I was eighteen, and this girl was clearly around the same. This was Odd Futures. Like I was probably. 2012 13 so this is like maybe not the peak but you know kind of like the around the peak right before they all kind of split up and did their own thing or whatever this is like around doris had just dropped whatever and uh he's like trying to stethoscope her and she's like (laughs) like guiding her hand she's i mean dude like clearly rolling her tits off just like you know you're done ecstasy blah 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 blah. but she's like on the cot like Thank you for helping me. And she's like, they're like fanning her. And she, every now and then she would like, and it would like come back to or whatever. And like trying to give her water. And every time she would like come back to, uh, the guy's like, guy's like, uh, he had his like fingers like on her wrist. And then he had his like phone out and was like timing her pulse or whatever. And they like the stethoscope on her and was like, yeah, one one thirty. It's pretty high, but it's coming down. And like talking to like another one of the paramedics. And I'm over here with my friend. She's like, they're giving her water and she's like eating crackers and she's super fucked up too. But I was like, Trying to focus on my friend and then also focus on... Because this is hilarious. My friend's fine. But, like, she would, like, come to out of, like... Not a seizure, but would just her body would just shut down. And then she yeah. would just come back up. And she'd be like, oh, my God. You're so hot. And he's just this, like, probably mid-30s dude. Just, like, you know, hairline... He's He was a handsome guy. Hairline's got... He clearly had... It, it's good to be a doctor and not have interest in in flirting with a girl who might die. That's good. Yeah. That's yeah. what you're looking for. Look, what you're looking for. And so he was very professional, but he also was like, have you, what, what have you taken tonight? And she's like, oh, nothing. <laughs> no, uh, you're, you're so handsome. And he would be like, I oh, fuck. He would like turn to the lady nurse who was just this like big, like runs the McDonald's like a Navy, yeah. like, bu- you know, butch. And she was just, she was not having it. You know what I mean? This little s- fucking skinny white girl, just like fucking every two seconds passing out and waking up and being like trying to fuck the paramedic. And, um, yeah, anyway, uh, the guy at one point was just like, had the stethoscope and she just, it was the funniest part of the interaction was just like, and he was like, <laughs> <laughs> can one of you guys <laughs> and was, I'm sitting there like and he like caught my eyes and I'm like clearly like you know when you're not supposed to laugh it's something but you're like and he's just and just like left and she just like following with her eyes where'd he go and I was like god damn dude like imagine that guy looked like he'd been in the industry a while imagine the industry 
imagine you're like thinking like, okay, I just don't need this girl to like have cardiac arrest. So I'm just going to do my job. And the whole time she's just like, (laughs) 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 and I was like, okay, clearly this is bad. Like, I don't know what's going on in this girl's head. Like this isn't, this is not appropriate. This is evil, but also like this is drug induced insanity. And this guy's just trying to do his job. And a couple of her friends had come in and they had like not witnessed that part, but had witnessed her being like, you know, there was like a sexy doctor. It was telling that to like the other more butch, like EMT lady. It was like, there was like a sexy guy in here. And the lady's like, I need to get your pulse again. And she's like, I kind of liked him better. And she's like, give me your wrist. I was like, dude, her friends probably the next day were like, dude, you almost died. And you kept trying to fuck the paramedic. (laughs) You were trying to like suck his dick through his slacks. It was like terrible or whatever. I'm like, glad I'm I'm glad I didn't fucking take ecstasy that night. That would have been, because that wouldn't have been much help to anybody. And I would have been like, dude, she's trying to suck your dick. <laughs> Do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know, dude, like, this is awesome. This dude, is, you, I think you guys are in love. Yeah, yeah. Literally, I would have been just over there like, dude, uh, you should let her, you should, you should, you should let her, dude. <laughs> dude. The best was going to parties where like two people would be doing ecstasy and nobody else mm-hmm. would. And like a guy would just be like really horny and nobody else would be because yeah. everybody else was just like big chilling everybody else was just drinking beer and smoking mm-hmm. weed and then one guy's like not like being i don't mean like being a predator but just like thinks that everybody is on the same vibe yes as him. So yeah, he's yeah, just yeah, yeah. making eye contact with the girls like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like pupils fully dilated just like yeah it just sweating sweating intensely and you know he'd be like dude i think she might be feeling me and i'd have to be like hey man i i think she's here with her boyfriend and i think she is maybe feeling him yeah, and i maybe. think i think you are staring at her so she makes polite eye contact with you sometimes i think <laughs> and that's just at a party you're not avoiding eye contact with people typically mm-hmm. i think she's being polite i don't think i think that's maybe not a tree you need to bark up you know what i mean i think what you might be feeling soon is this guy picking you up and, th- and slamming you. <laughs> yeah. What you might be feeling soon is a right cross, just right in this, just yeah. several right hands r- roughly in this general area. Because right now what you feel, what your brain's telling you, because it's flooded with oxytocin and serotonin, the, the love chemicals, is that that girl is imagining the same thing you're imagining, which is like a, a life where you guys do like a van thing and and you wear little tarps and you go to the jungles of Peru and you just hold each other and you swim in a crystal clear blue water and you know you guys kind of part each other's wet hair out of your eyes and you're just having these wonderful fantasies of this woman. She's not having those. She's thinking about like her friends are here. That guy's thinking about pulling your teeth out. <laughs> yeah, I one time I was at a party and a guy and a girl took Molly or ecstasy together, I forget. Yeah. And it was a strictly friends thing. Mm. And he obviously had a thing for her and she did not have one for him. Oh, man. And so I think he went in thinking, you know, tonight might be the night. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was not the night. Mm-hmm. Um, and he would be like, <laughs> I was basically just stealing weed from people. But um, <laughs> I love that. I love that little. I was basically just stealing weed and alcohol from the because <laughs> we like it. all pitched in, and then I had a Hawaiian shirt, so I would just yeah yeah I would just go, go put you know a couple nuggets in my pocket every once mm-hmm. in a while. Anyway, but uh, he, <laughs> I remember they were like sitting together. And he was like, you know, like just something about MDMA, just what makes you want to like, like have sex. You know, it's like crazy. <laughs> oh, and she would be like, God. she'd be like, yeah, like it can do that. Yeah, and she like clearly was also like not rolling as hard as him. Like right, right, right. I don't know if it was a body weight thing or if she just had a tolerance or something. Mm, but yeah, yeah. I don't really know how that stuff works that much. But um, but yeah, she. Um, I remember she did want to have sex with, um, one of one of my friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a guy who was really tall mm, yep. and more attractive. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Of course, of course, of course. I, I love the misconception whenever guys take Molly with people that they're like dude like when girls take molly like they like don't know who's like who they normally want to have sex with they think it like evens the playing field or something they like they really like 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 short guys who like um who harass them who harass them and just have like a lot of hair gel on (laughs) it's like it's like yeah it's like 
uh, you know, they, it's it, a drug it, that, it can make you feel like that, but it's like it doesn't. If you're not rolling hard, it's not doing anything super it's crazy. Not to turn you. off your danger receptors, dude. Like, yeah, it doesn't make. Yeah. You, it doesn't change the bio, the biological system that's like, dude, find a tall, hot guy. Or, or also the one that's like, this guy has been drooling at me. Yeah. For three this hours. This guy wants this too bad. Yes. This means too much to this And man. this, that is a clear... A woman is not going to... No. Probably not going to casually hook up with a guy who is clearly who is like, in love with her in that moment. Especially at that age. You know what I mean? And like that, you know, but also just like if you're like... Yeah, not, not a good sign. I, uh, th- this happened to me two times where, like, I would, like, we would do this thing where we would go to the lake, or we would go to Zilker, and we would, like, take ecstasy or we'd take acid and just, like, hang out at the park or whatever. And you do have, like, I remember two occasions where you, like, uh, it's a fun drug or whatever, but <laughs> I had, like, uh, like two times where we would sit there and like I'm sitting next to this person and like you've been, you're flirty with them or whatever before and then like everything's amped up and you're just like sitting there and you're just like holding hands and you're like oh my god like like you kind of forget that it's the drug and you're just like whatever like this life we could live you know I work at National Tire and Battery and you work at a library and we're both in college and we're failing we're failing but like what if we lived like in an Italian villa together and you just cooked bread, and I just like sat by the window and looked at the water. That was my. I made maybe four hundred eighty thousand dollars doing that, and then you, and then maybe you made like seven million dollars making bread for us, and and we just and and we watched the birds and the tide go out, and we watched the sun set, and then we lived a thousand years, and that was our lives. And then it happens that lasts for like eight hours. <laughs> And then it starts to wear off and you're like sitting next to this person and both of you have this realization where I'm like, I mean, she's cool, but like, I think I got like $10 in my checking account and she's, you can see it in her eyes being like, he's, I mean, he's not, he's not ugly. It's, he's, and he's, he's, he's like, I guess he's kind of funny maybe. I don't, and then you're just, the, the, the hand holding like this goes from like this to like this to like. And then you just over, like, as the drug falls away, you're like, I don't like this person. I don't even know who they are. <laughs> yeah. You have this, like, entire thing in your head where you're like, dude, I think we're going to start, like, the first, like, commune of, like, just, we're just going to solve all the world's problems by, like, um, uh, like growing carrots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, like, and being there for each other. And, uh, and, like, the next day, of course, you're just in hell or whatever. At least as that was the case for me when I did that shit. And, yeah. Like... I did it one time, and the next day I had to go work at the DMV. Mm-hmm. And I, the whole day I was like, "Yeah, I was kind of slept like two hours." Then yeah. I worked at the DMV, and I was like, "What can I get for you? <laughs> what do you need <laughs> yeah. done?" Hello. You're literally borrowing the next day's happiness. It's yeah. Just, yeah. No. Yeah. It, it was. Uh, it was always humbling. I never was one of those guys who could go to a party and then get fucked up and then just. Like end up, I guess I was I wasn't I wasn't really on the prowl so much, but mm-hmm. I feel like I would just get mean. Yeah, like I not not you're going, not like knocking people out, but not, you're just no, like, not going out of my way too. I would just like yeah, I would just my sense of humor would just be like I would just not have a sense of what was going to land at all, and mm-hmm. I would just end up insulting or like yeah, or just being a dick, yeah, just, abrasive or something, yeah, yeah. just. I had yeah. nights like that a lot. That's that's okay. I mean, I'm. I think I am kind of glad though, because that way I like I didn't end up just like hooking up with every girl I went to high school with. Because then that's kind of like now bad. I can go to high school reunions and I like am not. I I'm yeah, probably, yeah. probably not going to. But if I end up going to them, it's not going to be that awkward. Because mm-hmm. it's just like oh, they just didn't like me. It's not. This is not like a weird tension there. You know what I mean? I had this. Um I had this thing that, like, when I... And this is something that I never knew that was, like, a side effect of opiates. But, like, I didn't give a fuck when I would go out a lot because I would be, like, really fucking... I'd just be super high. And uh, the guy that you're talking about, the guy that's, like... The guy that goes out and he has one button-up shirt. Yeah. (laughs) He's getting pussy shirt. And uh, he breaks it out. He doesn't break it out for a job interview. You know what I mean? He doesn't yeah. break it out to like go on a date with a woman and like 
talk to her. He go he breaks it out for the guys' night, where they go to like four or five bars and you just swing for the fucking fences and nothing happens. So that was like some of the guys I hung out with <laughs> for yeah. like a number. And I had this thing where like I would be like, I don't want to go to the bar, dude. Have you ever heard of fucking Adventure Time? It's a cartoon. And I don't really like it. But dude, when I take these pills, I fucking, dude, I'm the dog, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they were like, dude, come out, man. You've been sitting inside too much and fucking eating pills, dude. We got to get Jake. We got to get Jake out. We got to get Jake back, whatever. So I would go out and I would just go out in what I was wearing when I was high and I hadn't showered or whatever. And it would just be like a purple, like, I love New York shirt from like the one time I went to New York when I was 19. And it was just like stains. And I would just have like my, um, some like old, like, you know, like the joggers that are kind of fitted and it just covered, yeah. dude. And like, just sauce and like maybe, maybe come. I don't fucking know. Who knows? You know what I yeah. mean? And I got my fucking, uh, like shitty running shoes on and I'm out there. And this is not a brag on me. This is actually, I think, maybe like an interesting social experiment that I was just accidentally taking a part of. I feel like I had more genuine interactions because the guys that I was with were like, so what do you like to do? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I would be like, oh, dude, I saw a bug outside, dude. And I thought, what if, dude, what if one day, like, I'm one of those guys? <laughs> <laughs> and, like, the, the, I, think, I think when you're, like, in your early 20s, like, a guy that's clearly, like, giving himself a temporary lobotomy is maybe less off-putting than a dude that has so much cum in his blood that he's about to explode. Yeah, like, didn't, uh... I mean, you like never. I, I think if you if you are one of those guys, or you're with those guys, like in the brain of somebody who's like you know fucking twenty twenty one, it's like, oh, this guy's just a normal guy. He's not normal. He's just fucked right. up out of his mind on pills. But in he's, the grand scheme of things, yes. for that social situation, yes, exactly. You're less likely to go for uh, a guy who just seems like a sexual predator. You know what I mean? Not a sexual predator, but just just like, like a predator. You know what I mean? Like a, he just went out with the express purpose of having a one night stand, right? A consensual one, but that is an energy that you give off. Where yeah. I'd like, I would meet like, yeah, I was gonna say like, I'd meet like, I met, a, I met two long term girlfriends like that. Yeah, just like just going out and being like, <sighs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and uh, like, and oh I, god, he's troubled. I can, I can fix him. I can't. It's not even. Yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe, yes, maybe some of that, but like, not. It's not even a troubled thing. It's like. <sighs> I don't know. Like, we talked about this on the show before where it's like I think the biggest – not the biggest problem that, like, young like incel guys have. There's a fuck ton. But it's like, you know, like sometimes I, I used to like to go on the Reddit thread and, like, like r slash incels or whatever, r slash whatever and, like, read about, like, oh, yeah, I can't talk to to girls because I feel like – like, I, I get scared. Yeah. And you exude a, like – you know? Mm-hmm. That – the person across from you understands and can feel that you're like, yeah, you know. So my advice, what, I, what I'm saying is my advice to the incel community is just get addicted to Oxy <laughs> for yeah. like three or four years because you can, you know, kind of maybe deaden that. I don't know. You know what I mean? Uh, but uh, yeah, now that, but like, dude, um, living in St. Marcus, like now that I, you know, I'm older and engaged or whatever. I'll go downtown sometimes to like, I pick my brother up from work or like I've gone a couple of times just to like have a beer and like walk around and just be in the city. And you see, I'll feel like David Attenborough sometimes where you see that there's like a group of guys, all of them just showered and put on that outfit is like the fit. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 That's what I'm saying. Like, like that, like the hair. Like that is you would never do that for any other situation. Yeah, y yeah. You, you that the hat, that's your that's your dude. I'm gonna it's a pussy hat. <laughs> that's my coming hat. Yeah, and sometimes it is your coming hat. Sometimes it does work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It for, for sure for those guys. Yeah, but then um, you but like maybe it works on the type of woman that's just like that's also there for the express purpose. They're just a, it's like a. There's a headache of a, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't mean that in a mean way, but like, you know what I'm saying? Just like a fucking, you know. I think also it depends on whether you're a, like, 
if you're like a stud, you know, it can work. Yeah, what's that? Like the if you're like a star quarterback and you put on your nice shirt. Oh, it's they, done. Yeah, it's done. That we're talking for for guys who yeah, are yeah. not that, which is the majority of fellas. Was ninety nine? Ne- ne- neither of us. Neither grew, of us. Neither of us grew up being like a six five two fifty jacked stud. And no. if you are that guy and you're twenty years old, you're gonna go out and you're gonna get pussy. <laughs> I mean, that, that's just how that's gonna go for you. That's yeah. not. We are. We are. Uh, we're podcasters. Yeah, so right. That, yeah. yeah, comedians. Little yeah. self awareness is needed there. Yeah, um, I I think it's funny to like. I, I like I like met my girlfriend on the internet and I'm like so this is like what you guys need to be doing yeah, when exactly. you go. <laughs> yeah 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 I like stumbled my way through bad relationships and and being the the the, the shitty one for like ten years and then just found a, like got in a really great one and now I'm like yeah what you need to do <laughs> so basically like when you go out like this is the cologne you wear and everything yeah 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 yeah. You're going to want to meet just a crazy drug addict too, and you guys are going to have a completely normal relationship. Yeah, yeah. girls who yell at you actually like it when you have issues. Yeah, that girl, they can yell at you about. You want to meet a girl who will definitely add value to your life and sort of like compliment you in ways where you lack, and vice versa. Um, definitely, <laughs> definitely go to places where like uh, people are being uh, sort of rented. Or like you can buy heroin, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you're gonna find, you know what I mean? Like you're gonna find really awesome. It might sound like I'm dehumanizing drug addicts, and I am. You know what I mean? Like I 100 percent am. Just take a piece of you away. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like it's like if you if you're a fat guy, you can make fat jokes. I mean, you can make anybody can make fat jokes, but you get like a like a you know what I mean? Like a little bit of extra oomph if you either are fat or have been fat i think same goes for like if you ruin your life for a little bit Mm -hmm. you can be like yeah no we suck like no it's stupid like it sucks like yeah there's this thing that i hated about going to meetings where people were like you're not a burden you're just you have a disease and it's like yeah it's a disease i'm willing to a hundred percent like you know yeah, but your family's not like, They're, dude. My son's <laughs> disease is awesome. <laughs> I I wish my son. You know, there's nothing he can do about it. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's like it. It's definitely the thing where you're like, uh, like you know, there's so much therapeutic language around everything, but especially that thing. And uh, so you have to be, you have to be careful of how you talk about. it. Of course, you never want to like demean anyone. Blah 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 blah. But I do remember being like, like talking to people who are like, dude, your family loves you. And I'm like, yeah, they love me. And they're like, and they just want to see you healthy. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. And they're like, and you know what? Like, they'll forgive you. And I'm like, eh. <laughs> like eh, eh, you know, oh, ah. maybe they should, <laughs> you know, yeah. eh. and, um, and you kind of grow out of it or maybe you like get it handled and you're like, oh, shit. No, nah, they should have maybe just like hit me with like a trank gun and then just like thrown me in a padded room for a couple months. You know what I mean? This yeah. the whole like we're gonna we're gonna oh we bubbly. So we're gonna work on your lived experience right now, <laughs> and once we work through that, I think we can get to the the root of this. The trick is not definitely for you to just start. Um, moving around, yeah, <laughs> and doing some chores and yeah. going from there. Um, maybe not hanging out with fucking degenerates. <laughs> yeah. 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 I do. I was like, I, it uh, is funny that like guys who are all drug, drug addicts are like, we need to get through this as a group. Mm-hmm. Us hanging out with each other is clearly a good thing for us right now. We've got a good thing going. Yeah. Yeah. We don't enable each other. Uh-huh, yeah. We don't pool together to buy our drugs, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. We don't like convince each other to call in to work. Yeah. You know, I think I, I'm not, it was a great movie. Uh, I genuinely really liked the movie, but I was in college during the, uh, Wolf of Wall Street pandemic. Uh And I think it convinced some people I knew on the periphery of my life that like cocaine was good. Like cocaine was fine because successful people do cocaine. Right. And that is true. Like I've met rich drug addicts and they have a completely different a completely different set of rules and standards and like what's acceptable and so on and so forth. Here's the catch. 
if you, if that's not you, you know it. You know what I mean? Like if that's not yeah. Also, those people are also miserable. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, they're just always doing cocaine, so they're yes, out- outwardly fine. You know what I mean? Outwardly fine, but also like they can their escape routes are they have more options. You yeah, know what I mean? And so they're sure. gonna maybe they'll feel better about the thing. Because they have more cool ways of alleviating the problem at hand, which yeah. is, you know, whatever. Like, you go to a state-funded rehab, and it's like, okay, baby, now we're going to get you in a set of robes. And then you go to, like, Malibu, like, Promises, and it's like, we're going to go surfing, and you're going to have some lobster. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. like, um, all the rehabs that, like, people I knew that went to that were, like, rich kids or whatever, it was like, ah, oh, dude, fucking Robert De Niro's son was there, and he gave a speech. And then, like, dude, we used to just go running every day on the uh, PCH. It's beautiful. We see the mountains and the sunrise. And I was like, able really to, like, see what I had been missing. And you talk to a guy who had been to a state-funded rehab, and he was like, dude, there was a guy in there who, like, ate, like, a lot of, he ate, like, a little piece of his own poop. So we called him Poop Man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember there was a guy... When I went, who he would eat too much at a time, mm-hmm. and then he would uh, poop blood all over the shower, and then just leave it. This is when you're in the mental hospital. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was like twelve, <laughs> and he tried to have sex with me. Remember? Oh my god, this is the same guy. The same I mean, guy. I, I yeah. remember you telling me about the kid that was like, tw- yeah, I was seventeen, um, so I had to be in the kids. Yeah. Ward. Uh-huh. And uh, so 16 or 17. I was like a few months from having to be in the adult one. but Yeah. Yeah. That was uh, that was the weirdest offer of sex I've had to turn down. Definitely. And that was definitely a heavily molested kid, unfortunately. For sure. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Not a, he was like, dude, I've literally, I've had sex with my cousin. Like, it's normal. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that was true or not, but... Um, probably, probably. Probably. I think he was in there because he said that he was going to uh, kill himself with a stick. <laughs> Which is the... Look, it's not It's not funny to kill yourself. Suicide's a horrible thing. Doing it with a stick is funny. It's awesome. Yeah. If like a stick from outside. <laughs> <laughs> like, not like a big one from a like, store. Like one from a ditch. Yeah, yeah. That... That's like a Native American method, you know? Yeah, what I mean? yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Um. Anyway, but yeah, that really stuck with me, and I hope he got his whatever the fuck he had going on figured out with his with his body, mm-hmm. yeah, and his mind. Yeah, wish him well, but but yeah, he would just the it would clearly be him. There'd just be bl- blood in the shower from him shitting in there. <sighs> Jesus. Um, but yeah, good guy. Still hang out with him all the time. Um, <laughs> he's normal. We hook up, you know. But <laughs> now that he's legal, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah. Anyway, there's weird guys, and uh, yeah, I re- I'll let up. I'll let Plank in real quick. Yeah. Um, Thomas is gonna go let in our close friend, Plank fan, big longtime fan of the show. Um, he's gonna come in here, and he's gonna have a cool. I wonder if he's bringing. He might be bringing food, maybe some snacks. Um, good rule of thumb in your life is to, if you have some sort of thing that you're fuck that's fucking with you, be it um, eating a bunch of food and shit and blood or like pills or whatever, so just understand that um, whatever you want in your life, um, if you have something that you want. And that thing could be anything, like a better job or whatever, or like um, better relationships or, I don't know, fucking being a band or art. Whatever the fuck it is, it doesn't matter. Uh, It's probably keeping, not always, but probably keeping you from that. You know what I mean? Like, if you have like like something you've always wanted to do... And you're just kind of like strung out all the time or like uh, drinking a thousand beers a month. Then maybe like, uh, what's up, Plank? What's up? Uh, 
Maybe just like maybe just think about like the cool shit that you want to do, you know, or just like the normal shit. Like if you want to eat like a hamburger in your life, you want a mic? Yeah, I don't care. Uh, I think it wouldn't. I don't think it would go because it's running right now. Okay, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I could. If you have anything to say, I can, I can hand one off. <laughs> uh, I think we were just talking about we were in the mental hospital. And then just like mental hospital stories. Oh, yeah. I was talking about a guy who used to poop in the showers, and he was 12, and he would try and have sex with me. <laughs> so. Where did we live together? Probably a decade ago, right? Uh, <laughs> we made some Boy Scout camp. I didn't do Boy Scouts. Did you, Jake? Yeah, I did Boy Scouts. I think, I think what's going to happen when I cut this audio is, is that only us are going to be heard, and then, and then Plank's yeah. not going to be heard. It's real yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you'll just be talking and there won't be any yeah, audio. Like lips, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, I could probably leave a little bit of the external audio in. I can clip it. But yeah. It yeah. would be funny if we say featuring Plank Fan and then we I don't. Talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's it's no just, audio just his body. It's just like a Charlie Brown adult where it's just like the mic's for so. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like womp, 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 womp. <laughs> yeah. Um, could like uh, do one of those AI like voices, like yeah. Eleven Labs, and just like transpose. Or, yeah, it. we just we just pipe in audio that you, that you didn't say, mm-hmm. and it's like I am a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> I sell children. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I, I while you were gone, I was like, dude, if you want to do something in your life, you just got to fucking turn your whole life around to do it. You know what I mean? You That's make- not true. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm a Calvinist, so you know, I think if. If it hasn't happened by now, it's not going to, and it's never too late to give up on something you know you've been looking forward to, you know. Um, okay. Like, you know, like we're not gonna make it. Nobody is. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Me and you are a complete failure. No, it's yeah, over, yeah. dude. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think it's good to not poop in the shower if that's something you can avoid. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm big. I'm big into toilets nowadays. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually ha- this place has a bidet. I don't know if you've used it. But no, I haven't. You, you I haven't. have to really angle your butt cheek. Yeah, or it just sprays up your back. I don't think I, don't think I used it right earlier. I was drinking. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I up to it, it on, like, <laughs> Does your toilet like pull in air? Whenever you flush it, it's like. Whoo! It like does yeah. this weird thing. I I don't know, and it's really not my business. Got you. Not okay. something I plan on looking into. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of things. You know, with apartments, you don't really need to take care of it. Uh huh. You don't need to sweep or take out the trash or anything. Mm-hmm. They do all that for you. Mm-hmm. My uh, my maid does. You have a maid? Yeah, his name is Alonzo's Alonzo's Alonzo sexual. Alonzo sexual. Yeah, how's he doing? He's good. He's he's eight feet tall, so it's hard for him to fit in here. Oh, okay. But he just kind of. What he's, does he do? He's a he's a maid, and he's also um, a powerful. He's a powerful demon, also. <laughs> and he comes in and he eats all the trash, <laughs> and um, and I I leave him offerings. Yeah. Dude, having a maid who works for offerings is great because you'll just light a few candles and you'll put, you'll put like a Dr. Pepper out and a picture of them. Yeah, yeah. I should put a shrine in here. I'm going like, to make a shrine to Nick Mullen and have it <laughs> right here with candles lit 24-7. Dude, how much do you th- – how many people do you think have one of those? Um, like 10? I'm sure somebody's got like a poster of them that they like jack off onto the wall with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, at least one guy you know has like it. I don't want to see that. <laughs> no, I, I like I. Sometimes I like think about like how many guys there are, and guys are different animals. But I'm like, how many guys go to the porn convention, or how many guys know every porn star by name? And I'm like, there are some wacky girls out there. I've met several, just kind of like addicted to clonopin and and wear like big combat boots and fucking smoke cigarettes and they're like anemic or whatever that that like do spells and stuff to like meet podcasters you know what i mean or like that's awesome indie band musicians or because most of them you could just fuck them if you, you could just have to. sex with them that's the big like, secret like yeah. it's like when when girls are like yeah i'm gonna try and have sex with this comedian like <laughs> if he doesn't have a girlfriend you can probably do it yeah yeah, yeah. Men, men are dogs mm-hmm. um 
a lot of times if they yeah. do um actually i don't know i feel like i feel like podcasters are in some ways more loyal than some comedians I don't, know. I don't. I don't. I don't know enough. I don't know enough to to say any. I don't know or about slander. podcasters cheating on their girlfriends. Yeah. I don't. If you do, I guess the one names. story that I heard was not about. It was about a comedian with a podcast who's also like a huge celebrity. So like it's fine. Yeah. But uh, yeah. But um, yeah. I mean, you don't have to listen. The men that are obsessed with porn stars, that's not an attainable obsession. If you're a girl and you have like a vitamin B deficiency. And you have like a lot of like maybe like a squishmallow or something, and you and you um, buy clothes from like Dolls Kill or whatever. You can have sex with podcasters if you want. It's not going to be good, and you're not going to get like a a bluey bag or anything. <laughs> yeah, you you might get like a a disease. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, raising canes. Um, you might get some pizza. You'll probably have to watch Point Break a bunch of times. You have to watch Goodfellas like five hundred times. Yeah. Um, what if it was bad fellas instead, and they did bad things during the movie? I mean, what if it was bad fellas and they did good things? How about hood fellas and it's Red Riding Hood? Oh, okay. I thought you were. I thought you were going to go a different way with it. Um, no, they would. Still what about be food what? fellas and it's just a guy, like guys having a nice, delicious meal? Yeah, or foot fellas and they're and they're they're perverts. Oh, okay. Jay, like, do you guys like this type of stuff? They're. Do you guys like this? You guys pay a fuck ton of money. They don't pay that much money. <laughs> they really. I mean, yeah, they don't pay that much money. I mean, if you did, these motherfuckers would have French tips. They, ooh. They do. No, they don't. <laughs> this is a size thirteen shoe, baby. I thought that was a sound effect. <laughs> no, it's good there. That's where curtains go. Against the wall. Um, yeah, I mean, I could, I could... If we pause this, I could probably hook a third mic up. I just don't know if it would connect. But... How much we got left on? We got 13 minutes. Okay. Um, when do you have to leave out of here? Whatever. No, I was saying, like, if you had time, like, maybe uh, you could do a third one or, or so. I got, yeah, I got, like, an hour. Oh, that works. Okay, yeah, we got, like, 13 minutes left on this one. Um... Yeah, I fucking. No, why? Uh, it's just the way you're sitting just kind of concerns me. No, this is comfortable to me. I mean, I think I do have like a weird, because when I lay flat on the floor, like it hurts my. I know that my spine does this. Could you take your shirt off and bend over for us, and take your pants off, and take your underwear off, and yeah, and, put a, and put a and put a tennis skirt on? Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And makeup and. Uh, <laughs> Dude, if you have a size 34 waist tennis skirt. Oh, Mr. 34 waist over here, Mr. Skinny. 34 is not skinny. Mr. 34 waist over here trying to. Oh, sorry. Did you get your shirt at Brandy Melville? <laughs> What's Brandy oh, Melville yeah, my, for guys? My size uh, Brandy Melville for guys. Zara? No, Zara has grown up clothes, right? Brandy Melville is for like. They only have one size. The girls in their 20s. They're just small women. Yeah. You just get a Target buy shirt there. Like, every, every like two times a year, I just go to Target buy like three different shirts, and they last me for like two and a half years. Really? I've been getting these. are just blank shirts from Amazon. Yeah. I don't fucking care. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, every, every Christmas, like, that my grandma, like, for the last, like, eight years of her life. She's dead now. Yeah. Okay. Um, she would go to like Walmart and she would get me one of those like I'm sorry. she's dead she died horribly. she died from from death yeah she died she would go to Walmart and get me one of those like novelty tees that's like it's like a cartoon gorilla wearing Kanye shades and he's like riding a rainbow wave or something like just like um like a shirt for a kid that's like Gonna get groomed in an FBI Discord soon. You, know you guys I mean? remember Threadless? No. Is that the, the mail order one? They were no. They uh. It was like they had like graphic. It was like in the two early two thousand tens. That was like gra- like a uh, Threadless was the wave because that was when graphic tees were like big. Okay. So I had one that was like an astronaut with like a rainbow over it, and then I had like mm. just different like art designs. Um. And yeah, I thought I was a shit. I, I remember when I first started running cross country, 
I would go on like four miles runs in like khaki like cargo shorts mm-hmm. and like a graphic tee. And my, my parents would get annoyed with me. And then they also got annoyed because I didn't have a phone. So I would bring my alarm clock with me mm-hmm. and time myself with the alarm clock. And that is how you get a phone. Are you talking like an alarm clock with like a two bells on it? Cause that's what I'm no, like a digital yeah, display, clock. but it would I would have to carry it like this, like in my fist. You were just running a track holding an alarm clock? I was running around my parents' neighborhood oh, okay. in, in khakis with an alarm clock. Dude, or something? they probably, people probably wanted to take you somewhere. Yeah. Like, well, pe- people that needed help. Well, I could run a f- five minute and 45 second mile. That is pretty fucking good. How old were you? Like 14. When That's I pretty that. good, dude. 545 at 14? But I, I was a lot lighter. I weighed like 140 I think at, at the 14, time. I was clocking in like 40 beers a weekend. But I, I ran like, because eh, I did cross country and track. So I'd run like eight miles a day mm. for a long time. I did Taekwondo too. So I was in pretty good shape. That's cool. But, it's always uh, nice to meet people who had like a, like, a, like I, mean, I don't know. Our brains are different, but. People are like, oh, yeah, I was, like, uh, pretty good at golf. Or, like, I was on the tennis I was team. never, like, I was never, uh, I was always sort of middle of the pack with any, any, even if I, like, really tried with a particular sport, which I did, like, I would, like, put a lot of effort in. I just don't really have much natural athleticism, so it was, like. Yeah, me neither. So, yeah. I know a lot of people look at me and they go, God damn, that's an athlete. Like right I would, there. I would put in so many hours with Taekwondo, and then if I went to a tournament with any Kore- actual Korean kids, it was over. Well, that's. I mean, I feel like that's any, like American Taekwondo. Athlete. Koreans get so tall, and they get like pretty strong too, and that they're lean, so their weight divisions like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least in the sample size of New York City Koreans I've seen, they've either been fucking like 230 jacked, like they could lift me up with one hand, throw me across the fucking crosswalk, or they're like the most skinny, like fucking like anime twinks you've ever seen in your entire life. There is no like us version of Koreans that I've seen. <laughs> There's no us versions of Koreans that I've seen. Well, look, and it is funny that we took that, that I only picked up that part of what you were saying. But if you only heard that, pretend there was a much bigger context that you missed. <laughs> and <laughs> it's easy to do. We have AI now. We can make it happen. Ja- it'll only take Jake a couple hours. It'll only take, yeah, like all of these episodes that we've done, which is like. He loves it. Yeah, he loves yeah, doing it. Yeah. Oh, Jacob- five is so like. That's low ball, right? Yes, dude. Yes. I like. He I, loves it. I sit on Premiere and it. I love it when it crashes. Yeah, it doesn't. Because this, these are like forty gigabyte raw files, yeah. like four K footage, and I'm like, God, I love it when I work on one and I make it sound good and look good, and then it crashes. And I also love it when I spend like ten hours on like seven episodes, and I upload them, and then people tell me that the audio sucks. And I'm like, Oh, what the fuck are you doing, dude? I made, I made a wiener. With the cord, and then I was beating it off and making it, it, it You're ejaculate. Making it come? Yeah, and I was making it ejaculate, and that's why it was the the width was changing. I wish whenever you s- spermed out, whenever you came, t- if you if your penis was like a water balloon, you could when you squeezed it, and it would all fill up like a fire hose, and you could go <laughs> <laughs> like a uh, like your like using like a cream cheese yeah. icing. You know when you like use yeah, like a can of cheese. It's a plank fan quote, mm. and yeah. But Jake, how have you been? I've been pretty good. Um, I need to get some. What if? What do we eat? Just we ate that fucking tasty ass pastry for, and we're back. God damn it. Okay. Oh, sorry, boys. And girls. Oh, we're back. We're back and we're better. We're getting better all the time. Uh uh-uh. Yeah. Well, I mean. Every good podcaster has always is just his penis out or something. This, I think I think uh, I think Joe Rogan said that. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a there's a man's penis born every second. Yep. Yeah. There's a yeah yeah. Old, like uh, 
Yeah. Doc, uh, Charles Circus said that. Charles, <laughs> Charlie Circus said that. Yeah. Oh, it was it. We haven't eaten much all day, so maybe we. I mean, I don't know. I know you got somewhere to be, so I'll probably grab some food. I had a delicious tuna salad that I made. <laughs> oh, that's right. And yeah, I've all ate had all of it. A, yeah. Yep. All, all I've had is a fucking pastry. I had so. an amazing tuna salad out of a Tupperware. <laughs> With with instant rice, I had a delicious piece of pie. I had earlier. an amazing tuna salad, and I put soy sauce and lemon juice and green onion in it, and then I ate all of it, and there was none left to offer to Jake. I wouldn't have eaten it anyway, to be completely honest with you. You didn't want tuna salad for breakfast? No, <laughs> tuna salad and Bud Light. Want, you didn't want tup. I was choking, and I had to drink something. I was choking because I ate the tuna too fast, and I didn't have any cups because they were all in the dishwasher. <laughs> And I only had one tiny piece of Tupperware to drink out of, and I thought, fuck this, I'm drinking uh, w- one quarter of a beer for breakfast, I guess. That's okay. Didn't even finish the beer because I had self-control. We're on, we're on vacation. And then, and then I drank some water. Um, no, I didn't drink any water. I drank some coffee. Yeah, yeah. And that is a type of water that's brown <laughs> and sweet. Uh. And it's delicious. It comes... What the fuck? We're just going to end this one. Goodbye, everybody.